Welcome back to another episode of 40 Facts About the 40K Universe. I am your host, Gersh One, and you are watching One Mind Syndicate. Today, we continue with the Death Watch. We will be talking more about the different Death Watch stations posted out in the world. So let's get to it. 40 Facts About the Death Watch. Deep in the midst of the Hades anomaly lies an empty star system composed of little more than a massive, nameless blue giant, a scattering of small planetoids, and trillions and trillions of square kilometers of beautiful rolling dust clouds. The Hadex anomaly is a raging warp phenomenon that lies at the core of the Jericho Reach in the eastern fringe of the galaxy. Here in this out-of-the-way system, carved into a massive, deeply scarred asteroid is watch station Belarius, long thought lost and destroyed in the depths of the Hadex anomaly. Built by the Death Watch millennia ago to monitor Zeno's activity in and around the important worlds that once lay at the center of the Jericho Reach, a tour on the watch station of Belarius was once one of the most coveted assignments for a Death Watch battle brother. It was newly constructed and located near the beating heart of the sector, but well removed from it and isolated in its system. This arrangement allowed a battle brother solitude for his contemplations and devotions, but also kept him close enough to the sector at Veranos and many important war routes so that if he and his kill team could respond to threats at a moment's notice. When the fall came, the Battle Brothers station at the watch station Belarius were simply overwhelmed by the sheer number and force of the demons screaming in from the Immaterium. When the Hadex anomaly opened and spilled the raw energies of the warp into the Jericho Reach, it all but engulfed watch station Belarius. In an instant, most of the watch station's inhabitants, chapter serfs and battle brothers alike, were mutated or killed outright by the intensifying of the warp energies. Those who survived this initial onslaught were left alone and cut off from all support, but left alone to defend the watch station from the hordes of slavering demons and warp entities that swarmed into Belarius, devouring all before them. The Battle Brothers and remaining chapter serfs fought to the last. The watch commander took his own life as his body twisted and mutated before his very eyes. One final astropathic transmission was received by the watch station Middale, 72 Terran standard hours after the first arrival of the anomaly. A short message that stated simply, we are holding our own. The watch station on Crestus recently came under attack by a group of Chaos Renegades who believed that they had discovered a treasure trove of powerful artifacts. With the aid of the automated defenses of the station, a single battle brother on patrol beat back the attackers, though the structure sustained a great deal of damage. The battle brother repaired the damage before leaving the station to continue his vigil. The repairs performed on the station did not address all of the damage as previously believed. The renegade's attack did more damage than anyone could have discovered. The Chaos Forces left behind a warp entity on Crescent, a being of pure malice and hatred that wormed its way into the station's pathway and data core. The station now possessed a malignant intelligence that guided its sensors and readings, searching the surrounding area for something that only it knew. To date, the information gathered by the station has been manipulated and altered by the demon, and all information relayed to the Death Watch has been scrubbed off of anything of value. To the Imperium, Crescent Station continues to monitor a dead world and its surrounding environments with little of value detected. Should a kill team arrive on Crescent to utilize the station, they would find a common watch station with nothing out of the ordinary at first glance. However, if any length of time were spent inside its walls, the demon's bloodthirsty nature would take hold and subject any within to halls of horror. Watch Station CX-3119 was established to study the Hadex anomaly nearly 800 years ago 
Due to reports fluctuating of the anomaly, this watch station was initially created to be mobile. In addition to the usual banks of sensors, this station also sported powerful warp detectors to warn of any dangerous expansion of the anomaly that may place the structure at risk. Sadly, these devices did not provide enough notice when the Hadix expanded to nearly half again its size, sucking the station into the anomaly and cutting it off from the Death Watch. At the time, the station was unmanned, and while the Immaterium was loath to lose a valuable monitoring tool, it considered the station gone and classified it as destroyed. One can imagine the surprise of all with the Death Watch when the watch station CX-3119 reappeared in the 815th year of the 41st millennium. The station's reappearance was provoked great debate amongst the chapter of Vigilance and the Inquisition. The structure's new location is many light years from where it originally vanished, creating additional speculation on the nature of the anomaly. Many wish to investigate the station to see what details the station's sensors have recorded during its time within the anomaly. While the matter is debated, an elaborate system of quarantine beacons have been put in place, warning all ships to keep a safe distance from the station. Located deep in the storm-wrecked mountain range of Yobel II, Watch Station Yobel is less of a watch station and more of a fortress. Its winding halls are carved out of the very mountain itself, and its facilities are large enough to house and train multiple kill teams simultaneously. Yobel has acted as a primary launch point for all operations into the Hadex anomaly, and contains various ancient devices for monitoring and observing the movements of Xenos in and around the warp rift. Inside the station, the dark halls are all but empty except for a few serfs and servitors, and the two battle brothers whose task it was to stay ever vigilant for the rise of whatever unknown threat the desolate planet possesses. From what the Death Watch could ascertain, its original purpose was to watch over the valleys far below the mountain on which it stands. A grand network of picked feeds have been assembled and maintained across the surrounding area of the planet, though the images they transmit back to the watch station are commonly blurry and distorted from the massive electrical interference within the planet's atmosphere. There was little evidence as to why the architects of the watch station desired the barren valley to be observed. Year after year, the picked feed would return nothing but gray static images of a barren landscape. Fanciful tales were passed down amongst the serfs, tales of mechanical horrors that stalked the valleys during the worst of the storms. There are some battle brothers amongst those who have served at the watch station that believe the tales of the serfs. Scattered through the archives are different grainy pics, saved from the feeds that depict looming silhouettes of mechanical spiders, a faint green glow emitting from the lines on their bodies through the distortion in the storm. Each time one of these pictures was taken, the Battle Brothers would leave to investigate after the storm subsided, but would find no evidence that any such being ever existed. This has led to the watch station getting a strong reputation for ghost stories and tall tales. Since the Eculus Crusade came to the Jericho Reach, watch station Yobel has seen a radical transformation as the Hadix anomaly expands it has begun to consume the system around it. One such lost world houses watch station Middel, the closest Death Watch outpost to the anomaly. With the loss of Middel, Yobel became the closest and it began housing all kill teams operating in the area. This increase in traffic was far larger than the small tower could possibly house, and as more and more kill teams passed through it, it became a necessity to expand the watch station. Tech marines and serfs, under the supervision of Harl Greyweaver, began construction to enlarge the watch station, hollowing out the very mountain it stood on. Intricate networks of passages were carved out, a giant hangar was created and ancient equipment was shipped in. Within the course of a decade, the watch station turned from a lonely tower to a versatile space marine fortress. 
Now the hallways of watch station Yobel bustle with activity. Banks of Cognitor process information on Zeno's activity in and around the Hadex anomaly. Kill teams prep for missions and Ordo Zeno's inquisitors commonly make use of all the facility has to offer. With the explosion of activity within watch station Yobel, its original purpose has been pushed to the background, all but forgotten. The network of pictures and cognitors continue to monitor the valley, but all its fuzzy data is stored away and forgotten. But as the Death Watch focuses on the anomaly, something began to awake deep beneath the planet's surface. Watch Station Middell sits on the dead world shrouded in a metallic gray dust that lies close to the spinward extent of the chaos-held Karen worlds. The watch station takes the form of a single armored tower that rises from a spur of rocks above one of the world's dusted plateaus. Watch Fortress Arioc has not received word from this station in over three decades. In truth, it is a dead and lifeless place inhabited by a lone Death Watch battle brother, cut off from the outside by the spreading baleful influence of the Karen stars. For more than 30 years, he has waited for others of the Death Watch to come and relieve him, standing guard over the thing that is held in the deepest chambers of the tower. Slowly, the watch station servitors have failed and died. The tower systems have become corrupted. Every few years, enemy forces come again to claim it. So far, they have failed to defeat the lone brother of the Death Watch, who waits within. Outside the tower, the screaming wind howls and the bloody light of the Hadex anomaly flares ever larger in the cold skies. And those were 40 facts about the Death Watch. I hope those stories inspire you to create your own cool Death Watch um, campaigns or maybe even background stories to your armies. Just out of curiosity, how many of our viewers are actually uh, Death Watch collectors? Do you have a Death Watch army? Let me know in the comments down below. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, we want to put out some more awesome 40k content for you guys. So we're asking for a huge favor. If you could jump on over to Patreon. Um, and Patreon is where you can support us to keep putting out awesome Warhammer 40k videos every single day. If you can't do that, that's cool. Simply by liking, commenting, and sharing, you're doing us a huge favor. Thank you so much for watching. This was Gershwan with One Mind Syndicate, signing out. Oh, <laughs>